Right, so I've had this drill for quite a few years. Um, I got it really, really cheap, and I use it mainly for mixing concrete, plaster, well not concrete, some um, tile adhesive, plaster, things like that. Um, and also for doing some drilling, because it's got two gears. It's got a high gear and a low gear, and the low gear is really, really powerful. The only problem is the low gear has started slipping. So, um, I can't, well, basically I can't use it. So, I've taken it apart to try and work out what's wrong with it. And what I can see, there's the uh, main shaft. This is the um, high gear. That goes on. It's got it's got a lovely classic simple gearbox design. Um, high gear was sync synchro mesh, um, like a like a gearbox, and it's it's actually a really simple design. Um, so there's the high gear, it sits on the um, shaft there, spinning. And then you've got this selector, which has got splines on, which engages with the shaft. And then you've got these dogs, I think that's what they're called, which hook into, which engage with these little holes here. And then you've got the low gear, which sits on top of that and again spins. And as As the selector, so you've got it like that on the shaft. And the selector then slides this up and down the shaft. And these cogs, these dogs rather, engage and then give drive on this particular cog. Or it slides up and the other dogs engage with, if I can get them in, with this shaft. And that gives you the two different speeds. Now, this is the selector. So I think this is the, this is actually technically called the selector. So so the design is that that sticks in there, and then you turn the switch, and that slides up and down moving the moving the uh, the selector selector this bit. Um, so there's these two pins in between, if you can see. Um, these are free to move and they, they stop the two cogs from getting close together and engaging both at the same time. So you can't, you, you can't get both gears engaged at the same time. And then you've got these two, these engage the lower gear and they're sprung so that you can engage the gear without it being in the right place and then as it spins around um, they will pop down into the holes and same thing for the uh, for the top one so very neat very simple design but this one is spinning it's not engaged with it just engages if you turn it by hand it's fine as soon as you get any as soon as you put any force on it um, it, it pops out and spins because tch, 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 as these are spinning across. So my first thought was maybe, well, certainly these are now a little bit worn. It's done it quite a few times. Um, maybe this, well, I was trying to work. It, it, it looks like a bit of a flaw in the design, to be perfectly honest, um, because there's quite a bit of quite a bit of meat on there to actually engage. And for some reason, it's not going all the way up and, and getting, a, getting a good engagement. So I, my first attempt to fix it was I bent this piece up a bit. So it would give me slightly less, slightly poorer engagement in the high speed, which I don't normally use, um, but better engagement in the low speed. So put it all back together and it was exactly the same as before. So... That was a bit of a surprise. Anyway, so I've looked at it some more. 
And what it looks like is, where are we? I think it comes down to these shims. One there and one here. There's these two little shims that sit on top of that shaft, on top of the, the lower gear and they push against this housing here. Now, there's a small spacer here. And this feels, the edges of this are very sharp. And that says to me that this is worn. Because they're not, they're, well, they're sharp. They've got a rough. They've got a rough edge to it. It's a hard corner there that feels like it's been rubbed. So what I think is actually happening is that the this lower shot, this um, lower gear, because this spacer has worn, the lower gear is being allowed to rise up higher than it should, and then that's not engaging with the dogs. So what I'm going to try is just to put an extra little spacer in here. These are a bit thicker, I might just swap. Yeah. Well, I'll see how it goes. I'll have to try a few. I've got a few different washers over here of varying thicknesses. I don't think I'll use that plastic one. Um, I've had a rummage through my uh, toolbox, through, through my old nuts and bolts box. Um, and I found those anyway. So let's put it back together. And uh, try one of those. Just putting a bit more grease on this. There's a lot of grease in here. Um, well, I don't want to leave it under greased. It's got continuous contact spinning round all the time it's running. So this needs to be well lubricated in this channel. Right. Now it gets tricky because I have to slide this bit down at the same time as I slide this down. Oops. So Put that in the slot, that selector into the selector mechanism. Oops. Keep a bit of a hold of that. that goes in and slide this down. That's sliding down. can't see that very well. I've got a hook, this selector mechanism on this pin on the handle. Oops, there we go. Right. So, now you can see this mechanism. As I turn this handle, yeah, that's a bit silly. So, so I turn it into the high gear, and that, lift, that lifts this up. When I turn it into the lower gear, it pushes it down, but it won't engage at the moment, so let's give this a little twist. I'll turn the cog this way. I'm turning the cog underneath until I get an engagement. Now engaged with that cog, so that can go up. See that going up all the way to the top, and then all the way down to the bottom. So now I'll put this cog in with a low gear. I'll grease on this. That's 
it spins freely. Now, this is the piece that um, is worn. So, all goes on there. And there's a small spring in the middle, which is for the hammer mechanism. And then these two sp shims, spacers, they go on top. Actually, they're for the hammer mechanism. So in fact, they've got that wrong. So what I need to do is just, I need something wider. I need something that's this width. So I need that to be a teeny bit taller. Because what I think is happening is that that's not creating downward pressure on this gear. Let's say again. And when that, when that selector comes up, this is able to spin out of it. So, I need to go and find some different washers. Right. So, don't drill holes in thin washers with large drill bits. Because <laughs> that's what happens. So, I found a larger washer. I managed to drill a hole with that. If I hadn't found a larger one, I think what I would have done is uh, just filed out a smaller one. Got a smaller one and just filed it. Anyway, so what I saw here was I can put this on here. Should fit. Okay, I need to make that a bit larger. Alright, I don't know if it's fine. So, um, it's a bit larger than the other washer, but than the spacer rather, but I don't think it'll make any difference. It is possible that it could get a bit of grease stuck in there, but I think there's enough spring. I don't, th I don't think it's going to be a problem, um, but it, it could be, we'll see. Anyway, so some grease on there, drop this on, some grease there, drop that on. The spring is passing inside, and I've got these two shims, these, con these control the um, as you can see, they don't actually touch. They don't actually make contact with that spacer. Well, they will do. Well, maybe they would work. Who knows? Anyway, that's what I've done. So, let's put it back together and see if it works. That has gone all the way together. Which says to me that shim is not too big. This video won't be making it onto YouTube at all. <laughs> well, the 
That is intense. That is good. Okay. So that is the second gear that is now gripping. Okay, so that says to me that washer is a bit too tall. Although I can't really work out why, given how uh, just don't put that. That washer is rubbing on something. Okay, it's possible that washer is rubbing on something. So what I'm going to do is cut the outside edge off it to make it the same diameter as that. It's binding up, I think because I don't think the space is a problem. Right, I've reduced this quite a bit, but not as narrow as the shaft, anyway. Let's see if that's enough. Because it's blooming hard work. They say. Frustrating. <clears throat> right. Okay. Right. This is in high gear and it spins freely. This is in low gear and it's locked. It spins freely. And the reason it spins freely in the high gear is because I've taken the small cog out. 
So I think I've actually got it backwards. So it's the lower cog which isn't engaging properly, not the upper one. So I need to put the spacer at the bottom. So let's get that out and have a look at what's down there. I'm putting my space out and at the bottom here. And there's the big one. There goes the selector. Because right. also I noticed when I was doing it with that shim at the top, what was happening was the, uh, the the gear selector wasn't happy to turn into the one position. I should have realised there was something wrong then. All right, one, two, three tight. Have a go. Whoa. That's first go. No binding. Turn it into second. Turns easily. And that's second. And that's not spinning. Thank you very much.